The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, welcome to the day of the lunar eclipse and full moon as we hear the wolves howling out here in the desert of Tucson, Arizona. Let's take a quick look here at the German Bund. Uh, you can see here it's in the midst of a little bit of a correction, but folks, uh, pay attention to those bonds and notes. They're standing up and screaming, so there's trouble in River City. We will look at that in just a minute. The next one we want to look at is the DAX. You can see it had a beautiful pattern uh, right up into that July 3rd high, uh, three drive to a top pattern, rolling over a little bit. So pay, pay close attention to uh, that one, too. Uh, there's a lot of things going on today, but nothing is more important from what we were talking about Monday, and that was with the British pound. If you remember, we were saying that, uh, just take a look here, that this market was most probably getting ready to have a little bit of a correction again. And, folks, we have come down and we have shattered the old lows down here. We got all the way down to uh, 24.05. The old low had been 24.40. So they have broken that. Now, maybe it, maybe it reverses from this level, but, frankly, it doesn't look like it. In the middle of the night last night, uh, you could see something that was very, very troubling in the euro. And I just wanted to bring this up to you to show you this is what we were seeing in the euro. Uh, we have we have a five-day rally, folks, that couldn't get any higher than 382. And uh, that is really a very, very negative scenario. So that's why this euro has fallen so much. We got down to that 112 again uh, level. So it uh, anything below... You know, 111.70 sets up something just pretty nasty. That means the U.S. dollar is starting to uh, kick up its heels, folks. And we've we've talked a little bit about that. This is where we were as of Friday, and of course we we reversed, and we're back up to that 97 again. So that retracement that we had was you know basically nothing. So there's a chance that this U.S. dollar could get really strong. This is major major breakdown here in the British pound based on you know, the numbers that we look at and stuff. So I would be really, uh, maybe it reverses from here. But uh, I I just don't know. You know, it just, uh, it was a little scary. You know, you had a $1,000 profit coming in Sunday. That's why I said, you know, you could get a little bit of a pullback, but uh, the little bit of a pullback was a, a whole lot more than I was expecting. So uh, that's uh, neither here nor there. I took a nibble at it last night at the 78% uh, level and, you know, gave my 30 pips, $180 to them, and then went on uh, to the next thing. But the bonds have been working very, very well, and I believe this bond market is getting ready to head to Florida to visit all of our friends down there. That's what it looks like, folks. It really does. It's uh, it's just one of, those, one of those charts that when you look at it, it it's uh, – it just really wants to tell you, just, just to show you where we are. Let me get this up here right now. We have we had a nice rally of a buck, a, you know, of, of a one full handle up to 154.06. Uh, We're now back to 153.11, which was the 382 low. If we take that 153 out, uh, we're looking at uh, two handles down minimum. That would take you to 150 and change. And uh, that would also be telling you that, ooh, ooh, maybe this is going to be bigger than what somebody might have thought about. And not only that, but the open interest is increasing now, which means the people that are in control are the shorts. They're pushing it down. So I don't know. Maybe that means something or not. I'm not sure. You know, we'll just – but no one ever – no one else is ever sure either. So we need to pay uh, close attention to that. We do not have any guests today or tomorrow. I'm hoping to have Stan Harley – on on Thursday with a little bit of luck and Bill Meridian on Friday with also a little bit of luck. But we'll have to uh, follow with me today here 
uh, as we go through uh, uh, what we're going through here right now. Okay, let's move on. By the way, folks, I want to tell you something that's happening here in my life. I just think it's important because it's going to affect me here at TFNN a little bit. Uh, John Jameson is coming here uh, on Monday. He's going to be spending a couple months with me working on some things with uh, artificial intelligence and also some things with pattern recognition that we've been working on and some automatic trading things. And so I'm going to be quite busy doing some research and we'll have John on as a guest if I can. Uh, he, he loves to talk, but I don't know if he likes to talk on the air or not. But we had him once on TFN a long time ago, about a year or so ago. But uh, he's just got a lot of a lot of things going on. So he's giving me two months of his time. I'm paying for it, of course, but I don't mind paying for it because I don't get somebody at his level at all. So uh, this is going to be fun for me uh, to work with him. And so it'll be, uh, it'll be, uh, I'll share some of it with you if it looks pretty good. And I'll share all the bad stuff for sure. No, I'm just teasing. But if we find something really good, you know, we'll certainly try to show our friends here at TFNN some of the things that are going on. And we do have exciting things going on, looking at some of these uh, AI uh, forecasts that we're watching that look uh, that look pretty interesting. In fact, is I should show you the one from. Uh, let's just get this up here. The one from last night uh, in the euro, which was uh, very, very, uh, very, very telling, because you can see here when we were up there at that 152.60 level, that was where the 382 started to come down, and the market started to break, you know, dramatically from that level. Only broke $600, but you know, for intraday. You know, that's not uh, that's not too much. Oh, I forgot to bring up the FTSE here because the FTSE has been stronger than the DAX. And that's really hard to believe, given the fact that the pound is in the sewer. But uh, you'll notice that we have completed the ABCD up here now in the FTSE. And it was exactly at the 78 percent retracement of the May high. So if you like numbers and I do like numbers, pay attention to that number because uh, it looks uh, looks pretty interesting. We've been rallying ever since December 26. The whole world bottom there, you know, that was that big bottom that we talked about many times in the stock market. It was a Bradley bo bottom and stuff. So, this is what we're looking at right now in this uh, particular one with the uh, with the FTSE. But with that pound coming in unglued like that, that might have some effect uh, on what's going on over there because the pound hasn't been below 125. But more than twice in the last year, and now it's trading below it, which is a uh, – and not only that, it's trading below it after a, uh, a 382 retracement that took, you know, four days, you know, to complete. And that, that, that in itself was a little bit scary. So – Got to watch that one for sure. The gold and silver still looking. You know, the gold and silver is acting relatively well. You know, we're, uh, the last I saw, we were trading around 1412 in the silver, uh, gold, and the silver was up around um, uh, 1548. It's not giving back up. It's not giving much up, and platinum's not giving any up. So the the uh, they're starting to look look better here. So uh, uh, Maria is saying that bonds might drag stocks down for a change. Maria, that's one of the things I try not to do is think that way because I got in more trouble thinking about that stuff than just trading it. So sometimes they go together, sometimes they don't. I did a lot of studies on that, on whether the bonds and stocks have a correlation. And they do have a correlation, but it might only last uh, three weeks or four weeks, and then they go wacko for two months. So I couldn't find out uh, anything there that was, uh, was worth anything. But, boy, the bonds look really bad. I mean, they... They don't have any friends now. I wonder where all those friends were. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart up of the uh, Treasury notes, uh, daily chart going back the last couple of years. Uh, you can see... Uh, that important day of May the 28th when the notes took off. That's when open interest started to explode. But then uh, right at the high there for the two-week time period, open interest started to drop. And that meant that the market was weakening. And as you can see, it certainly is. We are now below the levels where we were on August of 2017. That's not a good sign. The reason why I'm bringing up this chart, not only to show you the importance of May 28th and the open interest, is the fact that we have a gap there at 125.10. That's going to be a very important gap. If you look at it uh, very, very closely, you're going to see that's the old highs that we made back in early 2009. That will also be a 382 retracement of the low from November. So looking at those numbers, it looks like 125.10 would be something that would be very, very interesting to look at uh, uh, from a technical basis. And maybe that's where you get your life preservers to get ready to ride the boat or the ship. Ship Boats are on ships. Ships fly. Or ships are in the ocean and boats ride on ships. But anyway, uh, 125.10, that's what we're looking at for our first objective on the downside here. Uh, all we need to do is to break that 126, uh, 125, let's try it again, 126 level. Uh, uh, by just a little bit more, we'll be heading down to that level, it looks like, because there was no bounce, folks. We had a seven-day correction in the Treasury bonds from 157 down to 152 and change, and the most they could rally was a little over a point at 154.05. That is not very bullish news, folks. I mean, that really isn't. That's, uh, that's, quite, that's actually quite negative. Now, I did want to, we had some really great charts that were sent to us by one of our listeners here at TFNN on the Elliott Wave stuff. And uh, I would like to bring this up to, to show you. It's a very interesting chart here because it reveals, it's coming here. Uh, what do you mean there was no chart? Uh, there was no chart on the bonds or the notes? What? Oh, don't tell me this, please. There was no chart on the notes. Oh, I give up. 
I give up. All right, just a minute. Let me get it up here. What did I do wrong? I did it exactly like I always do. Well, maybe I always do it wrong. I don't know. Let me let me get it up here, folks. Hold on. Here it is. Let's try it again. I did it again. I Let me try it again. Okay, here we go. See if it opened up here. Just see the importance of that gap at 125.10. That's the important thing that you want to look at. That's why it looks so, uh, you know, very, very important. That's why. Okay. All right. Now let's move over and talk a little bit about gold and a little bit about the Elliott wave. We'll get this up here to take a quick look at it. This was interesting to me because this is the first time I've seen the Elliott wave boys uh, put it out this way. Notice, folks, uh, this this is really important for me. But look at the look at the A B C D pattern. You see where it has the D right here and then the E. Well, what? Why not? Why couldn't it be A B C and D up there where it is when it broke out at one four, uh, fourteen hundred and forty one? Why why couldn't it be that? I mean that I mean that doesn't make any sense and also you could see another a b c d from c to d to e that's also the same thing so how they how they 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 label these i don't i don't know if it's that important or not i, I you know all i know is that that's <laughs> that's what i'm looking at so we'll see all i feel very strongly that if we get above 1441 we're going to see 1550 in the uh in the gold without too much trouble they're showing 1500 and uh, you can see up there 1587 to 1595 would be the maximum. But uh, I'm not sure uh, after this longer period of down uh, from six, from 1932 uh, down to 1,000, uh, it could be a lot more than that. I don't know. Okay, now we have someone new in the room, Lorna, on crude oil. Let's get it up and look. Hold on. Here we go. Here we got the crude oil coming up. Let's see. Make sure we get this popped up here. There we go. All right, here's crude oil. Uh, we were looking for a bearish scenario coming in this week because we had closed right at the 61% retracement at uh, 60.39. We made a little bit higher high, I believe. Uh, no, they were very close. 60, 60.90 was the actual. 60.92, I was high. We broke down to um, 59 and change, and now we're holding this level. A lot of support at 59 on a short-term basis. And any move above 61, you can see this thing really get moving. Uh, but right now, it's got that strong resistance up here at this 60-50 level. Has a has a has a uh, has a positive bias today, folks. Uh, I, you know, it's jumping around quite a bit, but the bias on crude oil today is positive. It has nothing to do with the uh, full moon or lunar eclipse, anything like that. It has more to do with the pattern that is there and the fact that it's moving so quietly. Uh, from these higher levels, that's really what that that was what's that referred to. Since we're talking about crude oil, we should also uh, take a look at the uh, heating oil because that's part of the cracking process. <clears throat> and as you can see here on the heating oil, uh, we made a 61% retracement, and uh, we backed off also in the heating oil. And of course, um, this they were talking about the hurricane causing problems, and of course there was nothing going on with that at all with that. So uh, I don't trade heating oil very often. I trade the crude almost every day because it has such good swings, great leverage and very low margin. So you can put, you, know, you can buy uh, $40,000 worth of, uh, uh, no, you can buy, uh, buy a quarter of a million dollars worth of uh, crude oil or sell crude oil for, you know, under uh, 6,000 bucks. So you got great leverage when you're, when you're looking at that. So that's what we're looking at in the crude oil. The key today, folks, is the fact that we have so much weakness here at the uh, euro. Very, very important support in the euro at 112. Uh, we've broken support in the uh, the British pound. We not only broke it, we shattered it. Let's put it that way. But the euro is still in this area where it has really, really strong support, and uh, this is going to this will affect us all, folks. If we break below that 111 area in the uh, in the, the the euro, because your your, your trips to uh, Europe and stuff, which I have one coming up in September, is going to cost well, it won't cost me that much more because it's in the pound, so it won't be too bad. Uh, someone's paying for it anyway, so I don't make any difference. By the way, I will be speaking over there at the old uh, in the UK. Uh, we've got a very large crowd so far, and uh, it's going to be two days of uh, trading. Uh, the 14th and 15th of September, Dr. David Paul, Tom Hugard, and myself are going to put on a seminar, and uh, it's got a uh, – the people are really uh, 
a lot of people have been there before that haven't been a, a lot, a lot uh, around. It, it haven't been around a while, so we haven't done one for four years. So it's going to be a really good, uh, really good thing to look at. Okay, uh, any other questions that you might have? We got the break coming up here, and uh, no, no, uh, uh, no guests today. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. If not, I'll just pull up a chart or two, and we'll go through it and uh, see what we're looking at here. So that's what we're watching here this morning as we look at these things. So uh, we'll have a break coming up in just a second, and then we will move on to the next one. I want to bring up a chart on this uh, uh, ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial so that you can take a look at that. It's a very interesting uh, – oh, shut the front door just a minute here. Hold on just a minute. We'll get this up here. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a caller uh, in today. Uh, Mr. Z, are you there? Uh, Larry, uh, I am here. I am... Uh... I'm very uh, intrigued to hear uh, you're going to work with uh, Jameson for two months. Yeah, and then uh, twelve, hour, 12 hours a day, back seven to, days uh, a UK week <laughs> for a little uh, little uh, dog and pony show. 
Yes, I hopefully we will. I we're gonna. He's really fun to work with, and he's incredibly smart and very funny. So it, it's not really like hard work or anything. But gosh, what he can do with a computer, Z, is uh, uh, he plays it like a Stradivarius. I mean, it just uh, it's just truly amazing. You know, he can even copy and paste. Can you imagine that? How? <laughs> Oh, that's just so exciting. <laughs> hey, let's take a uh, – did you have a question about silver and gold, I think, right? I, I did. I wanted to ask you. And, you know, uh, please, if you've got something uh, you'd like to share with me and your audience right right off the bat, please do. But in the back of your mind, I have to ask you about Bill Meridian. And I know, of course, he does some uh, good cycle work, and um, I think you're in touch with him more regularly than we hear him on your program and the question is with uh, uh, with Bill Meridian on gold is is there a period of cyclic weakness coming up anytime in the next couple of months that he is looking at I will have to ask him I, I haven't talked to him in, in, in over a week uh, well it was more than that because around it was before the 4th of July so it's been two weeks so I will contact him this afternoon and uh, ask him, uh, you know, what he's looking at, and see if he can come on. Maybe he can even come on tomorrow. Uh, no, I think I got Stan Harley for tomorrow, but I'll, I'll get him on either Wednesday or Thursday to talk about it. But you know, we're in this really tight trading range. I mean, it, this really looks bullish. Uh, uh, I just posted the chart for silver, and you know, we're trading at what uh, 1545 or 1548 or something this morning. Uh, if we get above 15. A 70 in this thing, it, it's going to be off to the races, and that means that gold's going to be taking off too. John, we topped three weeks ago in gold. We haven't gone down. We had two uh, 30 or 40 dollar corrections, but we're, we come right back to the, the mid range right away. That means that there's a lot of people in there buying it. Open interest is increasing in gold all the time. Not so much in silver, but uh, it sure is in the gold. There are players coming into that market, so someone's someone's got a position, and every time it backs off, uh, they're they're willing to buy it. So it certainly looks good to me. Uh, very good. Yes, Larry. Uh, just on that silver, I'll mention this to you. Something I learned uh, a long time ago, and stick with this idea, and it applies here on the silver. Um, silver as you and I both recall back in 2000, I guess it was late 2015, a silver made a low down at 1380, 1370. And then, of course, it rallied from that level quickly up to that 21 level. And, of course, this past year, we've come all the way back to that 1390, 14, 1380 level. Well, uh, it's, it's worth repeating, at least as I see it, that the 1380 mark, was a Fibonacci 786 retracement support mark based upon a rally from four bucks up to 49. And any time I've ever seen a market go to a Fib number and stop and turn, uh, I always respect that and say, okay, fine, you know, I'm I'm uh, going to trade it, speculate it, it's going the other way. And uh, it hasn't bothered me whatsoever that silver hasn't gotten any legs, uh, any any giddy up to it uh, in months now, uh, more to the point, it just ain't, isn't going down, you know, under that 1380 level. And so long as that remains uh, in place, I'm just going to treat it, you know, if, if they can't bust it down, they're going to bust it up. And I don't know when they're going to bust it up, but... You know, they've tested the downside a long, long time. And if it doesn't break that 1380 level, it's going to go up sometime. And I just want to make sure I'm in it, you know, got to be in it mm -hmm. to win it sort of thing. So mm -hmm. uh, that's what strikes me in silver here. Well, I uh, I have to agree with you there. And, I mean, I posted the chart for the uh, – um, the gold, and as you can see, we're in this really tight consolidation range, which is unusual for gold. To me, that's a very bullish pattern. I mean, you got those lower tops and higher bottoms, so you're in a real tight triangle. But uh, I'd like to see it break the lower side of that triangle because I'd rather buy on weakness than to, uh, you know, to buy on strength. Every time I buy on strength, I should send my checks directly into the Merck. But uh, this is a <laughs> bullish. This is a bullish chart. Uh, I nibbled at it at 4.08 today, 14.08 today, but I didn't get filled. It missed it by a little bit. But uh, 
I think it's got a chance in here uh, to really get moving. Now, whether it's going to happen or not, you know, I don't know. I do have a positive bias for today, so I am trying to buy dips. But uh, so far, I haven't been able to get filled. But that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Mr. Z, I wanted to ask you one other question. Uh, you follow natural gas uh, quite a bit. And uh, I've been watching natural gas uh, for a potential campaign like you put on about a year and a half ago when it was down around this level before it went to 450 and change. I'm seeing the same type of higher bottoms in here in the natural gas. And it looks uh, it looks like it has that possibility of, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, doing something uh, like that. What, what, what you're feeling? I'll put this chart up so the folks can take a look at it because we are getting ready to uh, – You'll see here that uh, we got that 135 pattern. If we can get it down around 229, down about another four bucks from where it is. Do you, you have any positive feedback? Uh, what what we might look at in natural gas? Yeah, well, full, full disclosure, um, I came into today long, having rebought a dip yesterday and took a loss, keeping the losses small earlier today. Um, so, uh, having stated that, uh, yeah, I see the pattern you're. You're pointing to higher lows with that uh, low down at uh, the August contract got down at 213. That was that beautiful FIB 786 test, that 786 number coming in again. I have to sh <clears throat> excuse me, I have to thank you publicly again, Larry. <clears throat> it wasn't until I had taken a webinar of yours way back before 2010 where I even learned about that particular FIB ratio and my goodness, uh, you do enough market analysis on enough different markets, you see price, market price, uh, go to that ratio uh, regularly. You know, uh, not, not every given market, not every given time, but you look at a bunch of them, and I see that number crop up all the time. Um, but on this net gas, Larry, I am um, – uh, frankly, up through October, um, if it is uh, continues in a, uh, a rally trend, my expectation is for modestly higher. Um, there's things that I'm looking at that say, yeah, we could have a bull phase, but it could be a kind of a grind higher sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I want to keep my expectations modest uh, looking forward the next month, two or three. Uh, but uh, looking right here, I see that 229 level that you mentioned. I'll just share, in addition, 231 is a FIB 618 based upon that 222 low. So, yeah. so there you have it. Hey, thanks, Mr. Z. Thanks for calling in, buddy. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to post another chart from the Elliott Wave Theorist. Uh, goes pretty long, what we're thinking of, too, but we'll just go oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's get this. I hit the wrong buttons. I'm not the uh, sharpest knife in the drawer here when it comes to computers. Uh, uh, just a second here. Okay. This shows a uh, what we look like we're getting ready for an upward thrust, which I, I really think that that's what's going to happen. Uh, whether it happens today or not, I don't know. But but look at this real closely, folks. Don't, don't worry about those little threes and fives and stuff. Just look at the highs and lows. That's really, you know, really what you're concerned about. You can see the three higher highs up there between 1440, 1430, 1425. Okay, then you can see the higher bottoms at 1380 and 1385. And the last one was at 1403. Uh, that's what you're looking at. So ideally, you see where that little four is right there? I'd like to see one more move down to that level because then I'd be able to buy on weakness and I would be still in the midst of an uptrend, uh, but this market does have does have thrust, folks. It has a very bullish bias, folks. Since the 24th of June to where we are now, we're three weeks into this, and we've gone nowhere from 1440 down to 1380. That's a sixty dollar correction. The harmonic number is 64 or 30, you know, uh, 68, 38. 30, 30, 34 times 2 is 68. We did drop 60, so it's right in that ballpark, and it's done basically nothing other than consolidate. That's very bullish. And not only that, the open interest is still coming in. Okay, now someone asked me a question, how do I do the open interest? Folks, this is really simple. Get a little piece of paper and write this down. Go to www dot cme dot com that's chicago mercantile exchange dot com there's going to be a bunch of little toggles there underneath the headline uh, it'll say data you just click on data and then you go to volume and open interest and click on that and then they'll be all listed all the different contracts and you just click on the one you want and it'll show you the net change in open interest for that day whether it's up or down so if prices are rising and uh you know, the open interest is rising. That's market is very strong. There's more buyers coming in. If prices are going up and uh, prices are dropping, that means that there's more shorts coming into the market. And it doesn't mean there's more. It just means they have more power. There has to be for every buyer, there's got to be a seller. So that's what you're looking for. What you're watching for is that uh, when you're at record levels and you see open interest dropping, okay, and prices going up, that's short covering. And that's where you go to look at the commitment of traders, and that'll give you an idea of uh, what something's happened. In fact, the, the uh, Elliott Wave folks did do a commitments of traders uh, chart. It's very difficult to, uh, to look at, but I'll bring it up so you can see it here. Uh, I don't follow this very often because it lags the market quite a bit, and sometimes it inverts. As you can see here, back in 2016, the blue was up and the red was down. 
And uh, you can see here we're doing the same type of thing right now. So it looks like the large specs uh, are uh, in the market here. They're the trend followers. And uh, the commercials, the insiders, uh, they've looked like they've moved from a very, very short position. They've got out of most of their shorts, supposedly. Now, <laughs> I don't know. If that's, folks, that's why I look at uh, the bar charts. But that's how I do the open interest. I look at volume only when there's record volume or near record volume. The rest of the time, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So that's the that's the main thing of, of what I'm trying to uh trying to look at. So, you know, whether that helps or not, I don't know, but that's how you do it. There's a good tutorial there at the Merck. They do some good work, so you can go in and look at that, and you'll be able to see that uh, you have some of those things, uh, you know, lined up uh, the way you want to. So let's kind of keep an eye on that. Very, very interesting. Okay, and let's get back to the uh, back to the uh, uh, grain markets a little bit, folks. We've had a nice correction here uh, in the corn that we were expecting. Let's get this up here. So we can take a look at it today because we have this lunar eclipse here. Let's get this up here. This is as of Sunday. As you can see, we were completing that Gartley up there. Now we're down uh, down to 440 uh, in the Deese corn. We've dropped 24 cents. Uh, I know some people that happen to be short that. Now we're coming into this uh, lunar eclipse and the uh, full moon today. So I would be looking to be a buyer of that corn today, probably around uh, maybe 12 o'clock your time, just to keep an eye on it. That's another two hours, and uh, watch it, because if it's making a bottom down there, that might be an interesting time, you know, to look at it, because it's going to be near some major support, major Fibonacci support at 618 also, which would be uh, quite interesting. The wheat is acting pretty nicely, and beans are acting extremely well. And remember, they're, they're planting more beans than they are corn because they still can't get the corn out in many places. But uh, it's starting to grow now, so, you know, now we're in the midst of the growing season, so going to be lots and lots of changes. Let's move over to the cotton. Now, cotton broke down really badly, and I believe that what we had happen in cotton on Friday was a washout. Now, if you look at that little weekly pattern, you can see the ABCD butterfly three drive pattern. If you look at it really closely from May through July. I didn't write it in because it was too busy putting it in there, but that might be it. Uh, I thought that that 786, it hit it twice at that $65 a pound level. It didn't, but I'm really watching this cotton. I know Mr. Z is watching it. Uh, we're trading near 64 again, so we snapped back above those lows, which was a good thing. So I'm waiting for a small... Uh, pattern to evolve here on, on these daily charts where I could get a low risk entry. I have not traded cotton in 40 years. And I haven't traded, well, I traded coffee once or twice, but I've traded coffee a couple times, but not cotton. So I will be looking to do my first trade in cotton as a neophyte trader after all of these years. So that's what we're looking at. Um, okay, let's someone else ask me a question about something else. What was it? Let's get it moving here. A little bit. Uh, was it this one here? Oh, the palladium. I'll bring this up to you again. Another question about the palladium. Uh, we're back up here, folks. We're trading about 1550 again. If we clear this next high up above 1600, this is this is no longer going to be a major ABC double top. That means that there's a possibility we could have a whole upper leg uh, in the palladium. And I have never traded palladium. Don't know anything about it. I'm just looking at the chart. That's really uh, what you're what you're watching. So that's it. They're talking about the Elliott wave counts, and Peter, that's where I have trouble is doing those counting of those waves. I'm just a an A B a, a B D. Yes, Terry, uh, Paul Tudor Jones did get started trading. He worked for Eli Tellus down in Memphis. Uh, Tudor's father is an attorney, and they were friends. And um, Eli Tellus was the guy that started. Eli Jr. happens to be a good friend of mine, one of my students, and he's also a cotton trader living in New York, but um, Eli Tellus, the senior, was, uh, he was really a, an incredible guy in the same vein as uh, Amos Hostetter, that uh, he was uh, the king of cotton. In fact, the, the movie, um, the firm was filmed in the cotton exchange there, and I happened to be uh, an extra on the other side of the street. I got 25 bucks plus a free meal that day. Jay and I were down uh, visiting and uh, the cotton change is nothing anymore. It's just a pretty much an empty building. But uh, that's where it all happened, you know, back in the uh, 40s and 50s and stuff. And then they moved it all to New York. 
So that's it. I don't know when Powell is speaking today, Maria. Someone might be able to tell us. I know there's a lot of smart people. You know, David's in here, I guess. He would know. He knows everything. So, uh, oh, he's not in the room right now, so we can't. Oh, yeah, maybe he is. David, if you know, tell us what time uh, Chairman Powell is talking, if you know. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm going to post a chart here, a four-hour chart here of the euro, just to show you the importance of where we are, because this is 53% of the weight of the U.S. dollar index. As you can see, we've had higher bottoms, higher tops. We're still in an uptrend from that 111 area, uh, but we gave it all back uh, quite quickly. We came down. You can see the 382 retracement took five days to make that, and in a matter of two days, you come right down to the 78% level. Now, we've been here. We've been here for quite a while, folks. We've been here for two 240-minute bars, so that's 12 hours. So uh, that 786 is held, but boy, below 112 uh, propels this puppy far, far lower. And, you know, that's not a good sign. But as long as it's holding this 112 level, uh, 112 20, 112 10 level, it looks like it still has a chance, but uh, a slim chance, as they say. But uh, the problem here is the fact that we rallied for five days 
and can only make a 382 retracement. That's not a very good sign from a bullish scenario. So pay attention to that. Remember, we do have this lunar eclipse today with the full moon. Usually causes a little bit of herky-jerky stuff, as we hear from our friend uh, Norm Winsky and also from Tim Bost. So there's a few things that we're watching, so pay attention to that. The platinum market is looking the best of any of the, uh, of the metals right now, silver being second and gold being third, but gold could, you know, take over the party uh, by itself, you know, very, very easily. I'm really bullish gold, and I don't have a position. You know, that, that's the scary part. I want to buy it. They just won't get it low enough for me to buy. I'm too cheap to pay up for it. Going to have to pretty soon, though, because I don't want to miss it. And I'm probably going to have to chase it somewhere along the line. And I'm probably going to get spanked doing it. But I, uh, it looks a very bullish pattern in the gold, folks. It just does look bullish. I'm going to push it up here one more time just to – let you see how bullish it really is. The fact that we've gone here for a solid month and gone nowhere. I mean, and not, we can't even make a 382 retracement in a month. You know, I would give my right arm, maybe my left arm, to get it down there in that 1380 level, but uh, that's quite a ways away. 877 927 6648.